welcome to the special Facebook Live edition of Tuesday Night Empowerment. Thank you for joining us. There is a special word from the Lord just for you. You are encouraged to remove all distractions, so grab your Bible, pen, pad, or electronic device and get ready to receive what God has for you. We would also like to encourage you to sow into this great ministry. There are four ways in which you can give. You can cash up at dollar sign BOPFCC. You can use the Giveify app by searching Builders of the Faith in Jacksonville, Florida 32244. You can donate through the BOTF website at buildersofthefaith.com. Or you can mail your donations in to Builders of the Faith Community Church at 5900 Ripple Road, Jacksonville, Florida 32244. Thank you so much for your generosity. Well, praise the Lord, everybody. This is Pastor Brown, man. And I'm coming live from my studio here at Jacksonville, Florida, at Builders of the Faith. And man, I'm going to tell you, we got a great broadcast for you tonight. I am so excited about tonight's time together. I want you to do me a favor like we always do. You know how vital this hour is that we're living in, where the gospel needs to get out. And right now, the Father has allowed us this venue of social media to spread the gospel. So will you help me? As I grab my device, will you grab yours and begin to share the link with your cousins, your friends, and, and invite them to tune in. All I need is about another 40 minutes, about 40 minutes of your time. I promise you're going to be blessed tonight. I promise you your life is going to change. So let's grab our devices. You know the link. 
you just share it with somebody that you love and care about. Just send it to them. Say, hey, jump on with us tonight. You do not want to miss tonight's broadcast. This is a great hour that we are living in where we get an opportunity to share the gospel with so many different people. And the Lord wants us to be able to come alive as his church and encourage others to be a part. So I always like to do it with you to let you know that I'm doing it as well to let other people know. And then I want to encourage you just to pull yourselves together for a few minutes, pull yourselves together and just watch, watch what God is going to say, hear what God is going to say rather, and allow the Lord to minister to you tonight. So let me talk to those people. I see you, Yvonne. I see you. Come on. There you go, Juan, man. It's good to see you, D. It's good to see you guys on tonight. Tawana, there's my daughter. Come on, Eric. Man, I appreciate you guys. Help me spread the gospel tonight. Share this link and encourage someone to walk with you. I see you. I see you, Paula. Oh, my Lord. Blessing. What a blessing it is to have such a great church family tonight. Let's join tonight. Come on. Let's encourage somebody. Put your television down. Come on. Put your st stuff down. I see you, Robert. Marcus, I see you, man. I appreciate you being a part of tonight's service. It's so important, church. That we have come alive. Jay, I, man, I tell you right now, I see you. I see you. I see you. Vicky, hello to the Ferry family. We're praying for you guys. Chantel, my goodness. Johnny, I love you guys, man. Thank you for being on tonight. Latoya, I thank you. I really appreciate you. So listen, I know you're watching. I want to encourage you to keep paying attention tonight because tonight, you know, this month has been a very powerful month. We had a powerful service on Sunday with our uh, Bishop and Lady Narlene coming through and sharing, spending some time with us. Lady Narlene in particular sharing the word of the Lord tonight. I see you at the root. I see you, Miss Nina. I love you. My wife and I praying for you. Uh, I want to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to everyone who allowed me a chance to honor my wife and who was a part of that and participated in any fashion we say thank you you don't have to do anything for us but thank you for your love the kind words the seeds the gifts all of that it means the world to my wife she's working tonight at the hospital but she sends her love she appreciate all of you and want to appreciate your loving her and caring for her now this saturday you guys know is our community feeding i need all hands on deck i need people here at 8 30 so you can be a part of the community feeding and I want you to be able to participate in that. We need your help. As always, we're thankful for all of our partners, the Sheriff Office, Church Mayor, and now the word, word up, wall down, all the churches that are participating with us. But let's be here Saturday. All right, I don't want to delay the moment any longer. Man, let me tell you, I have in the studio with me a very, very special guest with me tonight. You know, October is Clergy Appreciation Money. You guys know that I've been talking about the power of leadership and how important it is to have a pastor in your life, someone that can lead you and guide you in these hours that the church is living in. And so I could not think of a better way to express the role of a pastor, the role of leadership, without inviting some of my dear pastoral friends in with me. And tonight I have a friend that is, has proven to be a true friend. Our church is almost parallel in the amount of years that we've served in our Lord's church. He has been a confidant. He has been a support. Him and his wife covered me, prayed for me, just have done so many things for my wife and I. I love him, his kids, his grandkids. We are committed to them. We are in covenant. Our families are in covenant. And we and it means the world to me that we're able to do that. Well, tonight, guys, I have one of the senior pastors of Heritage Christian Center with me. Dr. James White is here in the studio with me. Man, he's going to bless us with the word of the Lord tonight. I want you to put your seatbelts on, get ready. Let's lean in and let's listen to the Lord. And I'm going to turn it right over to him. I'm here to receive. I don't know what he's going to talk about, but I'm glad he's here with me. <laughs> I'm glad he's here with me. It's going to be a great time. Because him and I, when we get together, man, it could be hours of talking about scriptures, the church, right, right, everything. Right. So we know we don't have that with you guys tonight. We're mm -hmm. going to concise our time right. down tonight. But you're going to be blessed. And I want you, again, to help me share this link before this great man of Absolutely. God shares the word of the Lord. Your life is going to change. I'm going to turn it over to Dr. J. Man, he's going to bless y'all. Come on, let's lean in and hear the word of the Lord. Come on, man. It's What's on you. going on, builders? What's happening? What up, what up, what up, what up? <laughs> Fam, this is the day the Lord has made. I rejoice and be glad in it. You already know. What's up, top fans? So those who've been a part of the Builders of Faith community for any, any, uh, an extensive amount of time and you have been sharing this feed, you got that top fan. You may have that top fan plus one. 
Appreciate you. Those who've been sharing, you got that sharer over there. If you don't have that, I need you to share it. Now, listen, they've done something really, really phenomenal and real easy for you. They sent a link out, text link. Now, you need to have that link. Get that link. If you don't have it, jump in the timeline. Ask them, how do I get the link? Somebody will let you know. Because there's some people who are not on Facebook, but they're your friends. They're your family members. They need to be online with us right What I say? Right now. Listen right to me now. closely. Right now. So make sure you get that. Those who are part of the Heritage family. What up, fam? Thank y'all for rocking out. Y'all know Pastor Brown. That's my dude, dude. Listen, one of the, uh, man, I guess a major time, not I guess, but a major time in my life, my brother transitioned, and then not even a week later, my mom transitioned, and Pastor Brown was right there walking, uh, him and Lady Mo, walking us through every aspect of it, man, and, and it just it just warmed my heart. It just, I mean, it's just so good to have a friend that can be there with you through the highs as well as the lows. You've also seen him minister for us when we hadn't been there, as well as when we're there. So y'all know that's my friend, my dude, dude, and we in the bricklayer spot. Y'all see, <laughs> see the brick wall behind your boy, Absolutely, right? Absolutely, baby. Brick a day. Put in the timeline, a brick a day, that's all I need. Put in the timeline, a brick a day, that's all I need. Now, you can't be lazy. I need you to go in on activate. Get, get active. A brick a day. I need that in the timeline. A brick a day. That's all you need. We're going to build something amazing. We're going to build something something incredible. We're going to build something phenomenal. Something that, that, that will be worthy of Jesus calling us into the kingdom. Now, if we don't do anything that's worth our existence in the kingdom, we forfeited the blood. Now, that's a heavy price to pay. A major thing for us to have to deal with God when we stand before him and he has to look at us and see, what have we done with the blood? What have we done with the redemption? What have we done with the power? And we have nothing? All we've done is just walk into church and say, I'm saved, I'm delivered, I'm sanctified, I'm on my way to heaven, and we hadn't impacted nobody? That's not what the bricklayers do, baby. That's not yes, what sir. the builders do. Come on. A yes, brick sir. a day, that's all I need. So check this out. We're going to maximize our time together. A value of a good church. So that's what I want to talk. Let's focus our thoughts and our intention and our time together on the value of a good church. Not a church, but a good church. Called out assembly, ecclesia. The value of having a good place that you can go where you'll be fed the word. You'll be built up. Life has a way of flipping on you. Put that in the timeline. Life can flip on you at any moment. I mean, you're just on your way and boom, you run right into a traffic jam. Now that traffic jam only impacted you by way of increasing your time getting from point A to point B. But that traffic jam could have taken somebody's life. That traffic jam could have caused, are, are you with me there? It could have caused now a young boy not to have his father, a uh, 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 husband not to have his wife. Am I making sense to you that life has a way of flipping on us and we had no idea things were going to turn out the way that they were, right? So we want to look at the value of a good church, no matter the ups, the downs, how things are going, being connected to a good church. I'm telling you, it'll change your life. It'll challenge you to go to the next level and it'll keep you connected to God. It will change your life challenge you to go to the next level, and it'll keep you connected to God. what I say? It'll change your life. A good church will change your life. What does a good church do? It'll change your life. I'm make, it'll challenge you to go to the next level. A good church is not going to keep you where you are. You're not going to be stagnant in a good church unless you know you're a little, uh, you know, one of them special, you know, members. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Y'all know some of the people that, you know, just got to pray for the sakes because they work in you, right? And the good church is going to keep you connected to God. It doesn't matter what the noise is going on around us. It doesn't matter how society is pulling on us. A good church will keep you connected. I, I need you to have that in there, right? Yeah. Come on. I need you to, it, it, a good church will keep me, 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 you, me connected to God. We got to be connected to God. The devil will not stop jockeying for your time, your attention. He will not stop. He will be relentless in pursuit of that. So listen, let's make sure we stay connected. So our objective is to bring to the forefront the tremendous value that the church has on our lives and encourage us to take a greater interest in it as well maximize our connection. Now, you can have a good church and then not take full advantage of it. I don't want you to be, be like that. You're a part of an amazing church. You're part of a relevant, cutting-edge church, a church that seeks the face of the Lord, a church that's in the presence of the Lord, a church that's desiring to please God in everything that it does. So you're a part of a good church. I'm talking to the builders. Yeah. If you are visiting on this timeline, I'm talking to you too. Listen, builders of the faith, it is a good, listen to me clearly. What I say, it's a Good church. I got a friend, Dr. Jonathan Briggs. He's in uh, Charleston, uh, North North Charleston, South, South Carolina. And he, he says this thing. He wears glasses. He puts his glasses close on his face and he says, listen to me closely. So I'm doing my Jonathan Briggs imitation. Listen to me closely. <laughs> Builders of the faith is a good church. Are you with me there? So now church, our working definition for church, is a local congregation that has been assigned and anointed by God to make a positive impact on society with the kingdom message of hope, healing, happiness, and the hereafter. 
Are you with me? So the message is a message of hope. You will never lose hope being connected to this here church. Are you with me there? I know. I, listen, it's not good English. I can't, I can't talk proper. Right now, I'm not going to do it, though. Uh, As well, healing. When you face difficult times and you can come into a house like this, boy, you're going to leave. You, you, you'll leave totally different. You won't just be bandaged up, but you'll be made better. You won't Amen. see, because you can have a bandage on, but you're not better. I had an accident earlier this year, and wow. they gave me some bandages, but it wasn't until I got time with God that I was made better. Come on, am I making sense Amen. to you that? So a bandage doesn't guarantee being made better, but being in this house, it's a guarantee you'll be made the better. Also, happiness. Now, now I'm not talking about fulfillment decoys. I'm talking about the things that God has set in motion for your life that will take you to the, I mean, take you to another level. And then the hereafter. We're not going to spin our wheels, you know, having a life here that is only a fragment, just a moment, and we miss eternity? No, sir. This church going to keep you right with God. So a foundational scripture, Matthew chapter 16, we'll start at verse 16 and go to verse 19. And Simon Peter answered and said, he's talking to Jesus. <clears throat> Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him and said, Blessed are thou, Simon bar, Simon bar Jonah, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. So there are things that may seem like regular knowledge, regular information, but I'm telling you, God is the one depositing that on the inside. God is the one depositing that on the inside, and we know what we know. We are what we are because of his handiwork and what we've allowed him to deposit on the inside. So let, let's make sure that we keep ourselves open to, to, to the revelation knowledge that God intends to flood us with, right? In verse 18, and I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I'll build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. In verse 19, I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Now this is extremely significant. And whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shall loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. Now keys, when you are given a set of keys, that now determines who has control. So God has given you and I control of what we want to extract from heaven. Pause for dramatic effect. Mm -hmm. If you're sitting back waiting on God to release something into the earth arena that he gave you keys to, then you are on slow bus. Oh, wow. All right. So no, this is the thing. So I give you keys to the kingdom of heaven and whatsoever you bind on earth, I will bind in heaven. Whatsoever you release on earth, I will release that thing in heaven. When we understand we have the keys. Now, now listen, the value of a good church, the church is going to teach you how to use your keys. Yes, sir. The, t the, the church is going to teach you what the keys are for. See, there's some things your keys should never be used for. And there's some times if you're using your key. Earlier today, I was at my church and I was going through one of the back doors. And this door here, it normally isn't, isn't open from the outside. So as I was using it, it got real tight on my key. So I refused to break my key in the door. I refused to damage my key. So I started knocking on the door, and one of the staff let me in from the outside, inside. And when they did, we worked on it to get my key working nice and good on that lock. There are times you're going to run into some things that the kingdom has promised you. But you don't sit there and get frustrated. You don't break your key. Tell you, see, but when you're part of a good church, I'm, I'm, are y'all with yeah, me? Yeah. I trust you making, I, I, are you picking up what I'm putting down? I trust you understand that there's some times that there's a promise that the Lord has given that you have right to walk into. But when you hit that key, you may have to say, Pastor, hold up. I need, I need some time of intense prayer. Pastor, can you put together a fasting regiment for me because my key is not working? Can you, Pastor, can yeah. you help me? Can you and the saints get in agreement with me because yeah. my key is not working? God has given me a promise and the situation, I'm in a conundrum. My current reality is a contradiction to the promise of God that I have a right to walk into. See, that good church is going to be there to help you every step of the way, right? Amen. So there are things that you can expect when you are in a good church. One, the love of God. Now, listen to me clearly. There is nothing like the love of God, child of God. A good church is going to keep you focused on the love of God that you have a right to walk under. So, see, like for me, it's refreshing to go from being trash to being trustworthy. I don't look like what I started out as. Oh, no, no. This is not the James that God started with. <laughs> Even though I'm years away from my, my conversion, I'm years away from the time that I had a, a saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, my memory and the meaning are still intact. This is what I mean. So you can have something that happened years ago. You still remember it, but it doesn't mean the same. Yeah. No, see, my memory and the meaning is still fresh to me. Yeah. I remember when I got saved, and it still means everything to Preach, me. Preach, boy. Preach. I started out as trash, but God made me <laughs> trustworthy. Are you with me there? See, it's refreshing. It's refreshing to know that, you know, you, 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 you didn't even count on you. And now you are seriously committed because I didn't even count on me to make it. 
the, the truth of the matter is I was expecting to die when I was 19 years old. I was expecting to die in a drug transaction when I was 19 years old. I never saw my 20th birthday. So when I hit 20, depression hit me because I didn't know what to do. So you could be in a situation where you counted yourself out and God made you seriously trust. Are you with me? That yeah. glory to God. Yes. You can be in the, I mean, it's refreshing to know that, 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 you know, uh, <clears throat> you didn't believe in yourself, but God made you a builder. Put in the timeline, I am a builder. Put in the timeline, I am, I'm talking about me. Yeah. So when you put I am, I need you to put in parentheses your name. Cause yes, indeed, God made you a builder. Come on, we, we, listen, Brick, you see the bricks behind me. Don't play around. Don't play with me now. <laughs> don't play. I'm telling you, if you don't type it in, your keyboard going to freeze up. You're going to see ice just come up. I'm telling I'm, I'm just trying to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it, the Lord. All right, I'm just joking. <laughs> Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5. So now listen, a good church is going to keep you locked into the love of God. There is nothing like the love of God. Listen to me, child of God. Nothing can compare to the love of God. He takes those of us who, I mean, again, I'm, I'm just going to use me. I didn't believe in me. And God made me a builder. <laughs> Hallelujah. I, I, I couldn't I couldn't count to count me out. Now I'm not saying I didn't know how to count, but but you gotta have something worth value to start counting. I didn't I didn't esteem and give value to myself. I was lower than trash in my own eyes. And God put his hand on me. Oh my God. Man, come on, are you with me there? See, there is nothing like that. When you when you focus in and hone in on what do I mean to God? For him to send Jesus, and Jesus suffered the death that he did. First, he was limited. So now you got to understand, he come from glory and now he goes into limitation. He had, he had distributes, I mean, he was distributing everything at one time, but now he's limited. He never got tired. Now he needs to take a nap. Was never hungry. Now he needs some food. Free, sir. Didn't know exhaustion. Now he's totally exhausted. He didn't know temptation. Now he got to have a stare down with the devil. Come on. He did all that. Just for me. Whew. Hallelujah. You got to understand. The, see, but a good church going to keep you locked into the love of God. See, Amen. the love of God is powerful. The love of God is greater than anything that you and I would ever encounter. Put in the timeline, the love of God is powerful. I need you to catch that because the love of God, it is powerful. Also, the love of God is personable. This is what I mean. It's for you. No, it's for you. The love Amen. of God is not to everybody else and not you. Now, we know God loves Bishop James. We know God loves... Apostle Hilliard. We know God loves Bishop Vaughn. We know that. Come on. I ain't no question. We know God loves Pastor Brown. But does God love you? No, does God love you? Don't point your finger at the people. Pastor, don't do that. All right. <laughs> Come on now. Are you with me? See, now, now listen. I, that that, that thing is personal. He's talking it. to you. He said, with loving kindness. Who? Oh, I pulled you close. Yes. With loving, loving, not loved, loving kindness. I pulled you close to me. When we we didn't deserve it, yet he came to get us. Oh, Hallelujah. Come on, Romans chapter 5. You're taking long, Reverend. Pick up the pace. Romans chapter 5, <laughs> verse 1. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand. So I have access to this through him. Not because of me. It's, it's because of him. And rejoice in hope of the glory of God, and not so only, but we glory in tribulations also, Knowing that tribulations work patience, patience, experience, experience, hope, verse 5, and the hope make not a shame because of love, love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. For when we were yet without strength, ha, 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 in due time, Christ did what? He died for you. Don't yeah, make me run yeah, up in here. Yeah. I'm finta, not about to, not going to, finta. finta. I told you I could talk right, but I'm not going to. <laughs> I ain't going to do it. I'm finta break a run. And listen. He died for the ungodly. That makes absolutely no sense. It's one thing to die for people who are worthy. One thing to die for people who are deserving. It's, 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 I mean, you can say that makes sense. But yeah. for the ungodly, the wretch, the unregenerated, the God hater, why die for them? That makes, but a good church, come on yes, now, sir. it's going to help you make it through times, literally, just like that. Because as a believer, you may find yourself in some situations where you are embarrassed behind your behavior. You are ashamed that you thought this, that you did this, that you got involved with this kind of thing. I'm gonna make, let, let, let's finish the verse 8. But God committed his love toward us in that yet, while we were yet sinners, ooh, can, can y'all put some running emojis in the timeline? Because that's for me. I done took off. Boom. All right. He commended his love toward us while we were yet sinners. Not sinned. 
I need you to understand, sinners, I'm sinning at the moment. I'm in foolishness at the moment. I'm in my dumb day at the moment. Preach, I'm rejecting God at the moment. I'm rebelling against the Holy Ghost at the moment. And he said, kill Jesus for them. Ooh! See, a good church going to keep you locked into that. Because this is the thing. You can't draw me in with loving kindness. And once you get me there, start busting me upside the head with meanness, hatefulness. Are you with me there? See, loving kindness is what God brings us to him with. And that's the same thing he leads us with. See, a good church is never going to turn your loving father into some mean judge with a ruler smacking your knuckles. You ever had a teacher like that that, that that was, you know, ruler happy? All right, when I was in school, yeah. corporal punishment was normal. They didn't have to call your parents. They just whoop your hind parts. They had paddles in the class, and they had my, one of my teachers had a stack of rulers that he taped, and, and he wanted to take you to Knuckleville. What is Knuckleville? Put them knuckles out so I could whoop them. <laughs> So oftentimes we find ourselves being introduced to a God who's just looking for you to do something wrong so he can hit you upside the head. See, a good church not going to let that happen to you. No, sir. Don't keep you locked into the love of God. My God today. Are you with me there? So let's turn to Romans chapter 15. Number two, a good church. See, now, now, see, these are things that you can expect when you're part of a good church. A loving God as well, a great legacy. What? Yes, indeed. So now it's important. We're living to live again. We're living to live again. Put in the timeline, I am living to live again. Everything is not going to be done in this time. No, sir, no, ma'am. We are living to live again. What I say, we are living to live again. So we have full expectation that we're going to see an eternity with God. No, we're not going to be on the outside. No, sir, no, ma'am. We're going to be in a safe place with the Lord. So we're living to live again. However, once we, either, either our bodies are going to give out or we're going to be raptured out. Either way, what we have done in this earth will be greater than us. Amen. No, it's going to be greater than us. Am I making sense to you? That? See, what we're doing, we're doing this for the kingdom's sake. We're doing these things for the kingdom's sake. What we're doing will go beyond us. What, what we're doing is going to go into houses that, that we've never known about. It's going to go into communities that, that we were never aware of. It's going to go to different parts of the globe. You may not even have a passport, but you have an impact that can reach somebody in another country. I need you to understand that. Am I making sense to you? See, generations from now, they'll be blessed by your strength. No, Hallelujah. generations from now. See, a good church is going, is going to allow you to understand that, that everything not, is not about you. It's not about your house, your job. We are building a kingdom. Listen to me clearly. A kingdom. Are you aware that that even though Walt is dead now, he had a vision that people will come from near and far to Disneyland? Yeah. To Disneyland. Now, I'm not, I'm not criticizing it, but I need you to understand, that's not the kingdom of God. Do you have a vision that people will come from near and far to build us? Wow. Come on, come on, come on. I, I just need you to sit back. Sit back for just a second and, and see all parking lots full. Hallelujah. Sit back for just a second. See those hateful co-workers walking down the aisle. <laughs> Sit back for just a second. See those, see those folk that you've been sharing the gospel with showing up on Saturday. Come on now, helping distribute, helping care for the needy. Come on now, a part of the vision of this house is going beyond us. It's going Amen. beyond. God has placed something on you that's beyond your study. It's because of your connection. To this house. Amen. I need you see because it's legacy. So we got the love. Now let's look at the legacy. All right. So now because of the strength, uh, Romans chapter 15, verse one, we then that are strong ought to bear the infirmity of the weak and not to please ourselves. So your strength is not just for you. The word of the Lord that, that, that your pastor ministers every single week, is not just for you. So you got to apply it to yourself, but you got to help somebody else out. Amen. Come on. Take, listen, you got to help somebody. Listen, the strong have to bear the infirmity of the weak. There are reasons why people keep lying about coming to church. There are reasons why people keep procrastinating, why folk ducking you when, when, when you come by. They don't have the strength of character to, fall, to, to follow through with it. You got to pray them free. Amen. What I say, you have to pray them free. Put in the timeline, I will pray them free. Now, remember, if you're not participating... Your keyboard going to freeze up, uh -oh. that ice. I'm just saying, so when it happened, just remember, yay, 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 thus say it. All right, I'm just messing around, just messing around. But I do want, I need you to understand, you have to pray them free. You've been inviting them. You've been a good example. Come on, you've been living this word out. You've been testifying of the things of the Lord. And, and you just can't figure out why they won't do it. You got to pray them free. There is, a, there is a physical as well as a spiritual thing holding them back. And you got to pray them free. Generations from now, they'll be extremely blessed by your sacrifice. Romans chapter 12. See, so it's not just your strength that, that's going to bless folk. It's your sacrifice. Romans chapter 12, verse 1. 
I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies, what? A living sacrifice. Come on now, a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable, not hard, not difficult, not amazing, your reasonable, come on, say, listen, listen to me clearly, your reasonable service. So put in a timeline, I must be his sacrifice. I must be his sacrifice. So now sacrifice for our working definition is simply going above and beyond your initial expectation. Absolutely. Going above and beyond your initial expectation. I initially was just going to come to church and just be selfish. I'm going to get the word. I'm going to make sure I'm right. Make sure my kids, my wife, kids, right? We right. And I'm, you know, forget about everybody else. But I'm going to sacrifice now and I'm going to help someone else out. I'm going to sacrifice now and I'm going to share my church I'm going to share my environment. I'm going to share my safe place with someone else. I'm going to sacrifice. I'm going to sacrifice now, and I'm going to go and do something that's not normal for me. It's not normal for me to talk to strangers. It's not normal for me to care about other people. It's not normal for me to be concerned about other what was happening in other folks' lives. That's not normal for me because I don't yeah. care about people. Yeah. But I'm going to sacrifice now and start loving people. Wow. Come on, are you with me? I'm going to sacrifice. I'm a living, but I'm his I'm, I'm living as his sacrifice, not just any sacrifice. Are you with me? I'm not going to sacrifice my time like on, on Saturday night. A lot of people sacrifice some sleep time for the fight, right? So I'm not talking about that kind of sacrifice. I'm talking about a kingdom sacrifice. Yeah. I'm talking about a sacrifice that's going to make a difference. And then generations from now, folks will be extremely blessed by your support. Nothing exists of itself. Everything you and I do today, generations behind us will be grateful that we did it. Yes, indeed. Listen, this church needs your support. Amen. No, let, oh, come on now. Listen to me clearly. This church needs your support. So God calls us to a place. No, God calls us to a place. We are now. Now Corinthians lays this thing out, lays it out that we are what we are because it's pleasing to God. God calls us to a place. He connects us to a vision. We don't just exist. It's not random. It's not random. Many people are looking for their purpose, looking for why am I here? And you're missing the major element that God uses, right? So there are three things I want to give you. When, when you want to find your purpose, what did God say to you specifically? God has to say something to you directly, right? So you don't have a Moses moment. So then the next one, what is God doing in your family? So I'm going to give you a couple of families that, that you can see. The Winans. You say the Winans, you think, you think minstrels. You think advancing the kingdom through music. Come on, are you with me? The Grams. You think evangelism, right? Come on, are you, are you with me there? Mm. So what, what, has God, what has God said to you? Did you have a Moses moment? Did God say something to you specifically? A very specific, very clear. Did God do that? Second, what is God doing in your family that is kingdom impactful? Third, this is the most common way that God gives you your purpose. And this is the one that we overlook and we run to social media for our purpose. We run to gurus for our purpose. We run and try to get some money to define our purpose. What is God doing in your church? Absolutely. I need you to understand. That is the primary way that you discover your purpose. The primary way. And if you look to the pulpit, now this is what I mean. If you look to the pulpit to be built up, you'll get your purpose really quickly. But if you look to the pulpit for your purpose, meaning I'm supposed to be a pastor, I'm supposed to preach, you miss it. You miss it. God didn't call 90% of us to preach. No, he didn't. No, he didn't. He called a small margin of people to preach. But there are so many other things. There are several mountains of influence that your church is equipping you to be a part of and to dominate in. You spend more time in commerce. You spend more time in finance. You spend more time in entertainment. You spend more time in education. I'm talking about fields that we work into, right? And, and, and you're not impacting that. And that's what God raised you up, connected you to this great church, put you in that environment so you can bring the people from that environment, y'all following me, yeah. into yeah. the kingdom, right? So what happens in that environment? That environment becomes now a kingdom stronghold. What does that mean? That environment becomes a safe place for God consciousness. The thoughts of the Lord are dominant in that place. That's one of the reasons why. Are you with me there? So now, our kingdom, generations from now, people will be extremely blessed by your kingdom sowing. Yeah. Yes, indeed. The church will move forward with your support. Second Corinthians chapter nine. Let's look at verse six. But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also how sparingly. And he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man according as he purposed in his heart. Yeah. Oh, so let him give. Not grudgingly or necessity for God loveth a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you that you always having all sufficiency. And how many things? 
all things, things and may abound to every good work. Years ago, God taught me this about this about these particular verses. My sowing is a matter of my heart, not my hand. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sowing is never about what's in your hand. It's always about what's in your heart. Always about what's in your heart. Oftentimes, we go and we work extra. We work overtime for a down payment for a car. We get our credit right so we can get that house. We work on these things. It's not, it's not what's in our hand. It's not what's in our bank account. But we purpose in our heart that I am going to get this house. So we start to put ourselves in that position. Can you purpose in your heart that you're going to raise your level of sowing? Great, sir. Pause for dramatic effect. Come on. Can you purpose in your heart? Now, I'm just going to use numbers. I'm just going to use numbers. But I, I, I'm, I'm talking directly to you. If your normal offering is, is $20, just raise it five. Just raise it five. By the end of the year, my normal offering is going to be $25, and I'm going to work to get me there. And by June of next year, I'm taking that thing to 30. I'm purposing in my heart. Every man has he purpose in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves. I don't care what the bank says. I don't care what the usher says. I don't care what the envelope says. I don't care what the offering receptacle says. I'm telling you, God loves a cheerful giver. Now, God is never going to do without what he loves. Now, I, I, I trust you caught that. Yes, sir. God is never going to do without what he loves. So if you start to do something that God loves, God going to make sure that you always have to do it. Preach. Come on now. Come on. <laughs> I, I didn't make it hard. I made it real easy. So, so we're going to close here on the godly leader. So, so there are a couple of things you can expect. You can expect the love of God. You can expect a legacy that you're going to do something that's going to speak for generations. And then what you can expect is a godly leader. My God today. Now, listen, when I tell you I am godly proud of the life of my friend, yeah. I'm godly proud that in his absence, I, I, can, I can confidently know what I'm going to hear about him. If I ever walk into an environment where he is being discussed, I already know what they're going to be saying. No, I already know. Are you with me there? Because of the life that he's lived publicly and privately. Amen. So my friend has had some public highs and some public lows. But what he has never had is a scandal. <laughs> I'm about to throw my shoe at y'all. Come on now. Listen, when you have ministry at a high level, when you're impacting families, when you're moving the vision forward, the devil targets you and he shoots at you. But when you're like, now, nah, nah, this is going to be a horrible example, but y'all going to get my point. Not not long ago, not long ago, his name, now his name is not Teflon Don, but that's what he was called. John Gotti, the mob leader. No, he was filthy. He was horrible. But they couldn't get him. They, no, they couldn't get him. Now, now you know, it, 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 took, it took decades to get John, and John had his hand in everything. John was horrible. So the Teflon, I'm pulling on the Teflon. The difference is my friend has no dirt. My friend has no filth. My friend has no foolishness. It's like Jesus said in the Gospel of John, the prince of this world has come, but he ain't got, he ain't got nothing, nothing to me. <laughs> no, see, that's a good thing. When you have a godly leader, you're comfortable with people being there. You're confident when people are being, are you, come on, am I talking right to y'all? Come on, I need you to put in the timeline. My pastor is pure. My pastor is pure. My pastor, what, is pure. I need you to put that in the timeline. I need you to put that in the timeline. Come on, let's boldly declare this thing. Come on, let's boldly declare that. Because you have a man of God that's worthy of following. Amen. You have a man of God that's worthy of following. What I say? You have a man of God that's worthy of following, right? So having, having a, a leader is worlds away from having God's leader. So you can have a leader, but having God's leader is an entirely different dynamic. See, God's leader is, is, is concerned with pleasing the Father and nothing else. Nothing else. They don't have questionable behavior. You know how you got people who, all right, let me tell you something. Mm -hmm. uh, what's going on? You know how you got people, excuse my French. You speak English. I don't know what you're talking about. You know how you got people, I only get high every now and again. You know how you got people, I ain't got but one girlfriend outside of my wife. You know what I'm saying? That kind of, no, man. I don't want that kind of leader. I Amen. want God's leader. I want a leader that God has selected and that has passed the test God put him through. See, when God purges a leader, when God purifies a leader, that leader needs to pass the test. So from the outward, it doesn't look different from one to the other. But when life hits, oh, you know which one that passes. Y'all yes, yes, <laughs> going to make me throw another shoe at y'all. Come on now. Are you with me there? Glory be to God. So now let's look at Jeremiah chapter 23. We got three that we'll look at. Jeremiah 23, Psalms 23, and Jeremiah 3, right? So, a godly leader will fight for you. Yeah, yes, yeah. see, a godly leader going to fight for you. A godly leader, your battles become his battles. Mm 
When I say your battles become his battle. So he carries you in, in prayer. <laughs> your success becomes incredibly important to him. So, so we see, we, we see the same thing in Exodus chapter 14. Uh, Moses, of course, he tells the people, stand still. See the salvation of the Lord. The Lord gonna fight this battle for you. So a godly, see, 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 a godly pastor knows how to bring your situation right there in the presence of the Lord and tell you, hold fast, hold fast. Listen, watch, watch God turn that thing around. Now, knows how to bring you through and put you right into that place. My God today. A godly leader will also be in faith for you. So, so faith with you, excuse me. That godly leader will be in faith with you. You're not going to go through the issues of life by yourself. No, sir. No, ma'am. See, see that godly leader is going gonna, is gonna to be right in the thick with you. When, when sickness and disease shows up at your house, that godly leader is there. Amen. When poverty tries to wrap itself around you, that godly leader is there. No, this is the plan that God has given us, and we're going to walk through this thing together. So a godly leader will also feed you, right? So now you can't eat everything. Now, now nowadays, I don't know if it's as common for folk to tell you not to eat at everybody's house as it was when I was growing up. See, because we, we, we actually went outside and we played. You know what I'm saying? We went to folks' house, right? And and if I ever came home and said that I, was, I wasn't hungry because I ate at somebody else's house, I probably would have got whipped all the way to their house, forced to throw up the food, and whipped back home, right? Because you don't just eat at anybody's house. Well, today, you got to guard your spirit. Put in the timeline, I must guard my spirit. Listen to me clearly. You must guard your spirit. So just because they're a good minister, just because they're a godly minister, doesn't mean that that's the voice for you. If you start listening to someone else, you may start to grow incorrectly, where you start to embrace a vision that's different from the vision of your house. And Amen. now you start to look at leadership like, we ain't doing nothing. We ain't doing what we're supposed to do. We need to be in Mars. Listen, you've been listening to a minister who has a vision for Mars. Now, because your church don't have a vision for Mars, you think your church ain't doing nothing because you ain't sending nobody to the Marines. Preach. Come Preach, on, are you man. with me there? See, you can't eat at everybody's house. You can't eat at everybody's table. Am I making sense to you? You got to be full on the food that come from this house. You have to be full off the food that come from, what I say? You got to be full yes, off the yes, food that yes. come from this house. So a godly leader is going to feed you. Let's look at Jeremiah chapter 23. All right. All right. All right. How we doing on time? All right, all right. Very good, very good, very good. So we're chopping down trees in the right forest, but we got to make sure we get there on time. How about that? All right, verse 1. Woe be unto the pastor that destroy and scatter the sheep of my, of my pasture, saith the Lord. Therefore, thus saith the Lord, Lord God of Israel, against the pastor that feed my people, you have scattered my flock and driven them away and have not visited them. Behold, I will visit upon you the evil of your doing, saith the Lord. So I need you to relax. I need you to relax. God takes this role so serious mm -hmm. that he going to jack up the pastor if they go stray with your life. Mm -hmm. No, I need, I need you to understand that. Well, well, I don't know if I can trust, uh, trust my pastor. Okay, I understand because you're new. You're new to the environment. And I don't want to take you beyond your level of comfort. I want you to trust God. I want you to trust the fact that God will step in, God will intervene, and God will deal with Pastor Robert Brown if Pastor Robert Brown starts to scatter your life. Amen. If he takes your life carelessly, if he's mishandling your life, he's going to have an invitation to a room that he don't want to be in. He's going to have a conversation with the Lord that I'm telling you, none of us want these conversations. Oh, my God, they are never good. Are you with me there? Verse 3, and I will gather the remnant of, remnant of my flock out of all countries, whether, whether I have driven them, and will bring them again to their foes and they shall be fruitful and increase and I will set up shepherds over them which shall feed them oh <laughs> God said I'm gonna do this yeah. and these shepherds gonna feed them and they shall fear no more nor be nor be dismayed nor nor shall they be lacking saith the Lord now this is important this type of feeding will drive fear out of your life no this type of feeding will drive fear out of your life come on, I, I need you to understand yeah. it. there's a difference from danger and fear so you can be in a dangerous environment, not be aware of it, and have no fear. You can be in a safe environment, but not have the revelation and be terrified. Are you with me there? Yes, sir. So now, you can be afraid of the boogeyman, which doesn't exist. You can be afraid of Candyman, which is a movie. You can be afraid of Saw, which is a, come on, are you with me there? You can be afraid of Jason. You can be afraid of Freddy Krueger. Come on, are you with me there? There is no reason to fear something that belongs under your feet. Amen. You can be afraid of the devil. When the scripture said God gives us power over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt me. Yeah. Come on now. So when I'm being fed properly, it will drive fear out. Because when love comes in, 
fear goes out. Now remember, love was early out, right? So he's going to keep you connected to the love of God. So when fear tries to come in, it has no access because love is there. Yes, sir. Knowledge runs out fear. So when you have the right knowledge, you can mitigate danger and eliminate fear. Listen to me clearly. When you have the right knowledge, you can mitigate danger and eliminate fear. You're afraid of being in an accident. So you become very skillful at driving. You increase your knowledge on defensive driving. You are now aware of, of how careless some people are. So now you're mitigating danger and you're eliminating fear. Am I making sense to you? So now let's, let's bring this thing home where we live. I was afraid of the devil. I was terrified of the devil. But then I, I understood who I was, that I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus because my man of God been pouring that word on the inside of me. That come on now, that I, listen, now, now, now when the disciples came to Jesus in Luke, <clears throat> And they said, hey, devil's a subject unto us because of your name. And Jesus was just cool as the other side of the pillow, like, man, don't even be tripping about that. The thing you need to be excited about that your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Now, this is amazing. So you have a devil that's afraid of you. You have demons that's afraid of you. And when you say something, everything aligns. And he said, that's no big deal. The mm. thing you need to be excited about, that your name is in my book. Woo! All right. So now the devil being subject unto you, that's normal. But when you're in the right place, you get fed that. Yeah. So when the devil shows up, you say, oh, hold up, hold up, partner. I'm glad you came here instead of at my neighbor's house because they don't know how to pray. They don't know how to fight the good fight of faith. Now I'm about to break you. Go get, no, all, all of them, come on, in it, close the door. I'm about to whoop all of y'all. See, you know that because that word has eradicated. Come on, are y'all with me there? Amen. So, and then when it comes to lack, you know that God supplies based on your connection. Now, we're going to jump on that. It's just, y'all know I can't yeah. come here during Pastor Appreciation Month and not hit that. Y'all already know. You know who I am. You know how I roll. Jeremiah 3, 15. And I'll give you pastors according to my heart. God said, I got them. And they're according to my heart. Yeah. They're going to do the thing that's important to me. They're going to develop you in a way that matters to me. My God today. So now, you're marching orders. Now, I need you to do these things here because you're part of a good church. No, I'm not. I'm telling you, you're yeah. part of a good church. We have been we have been moving through ministry together. When, yes, when, when, when we bought our first piece of property, y'all bought y'all first piece of property. Yeah. We got a lender who would work with us. Y'all got it. <laughs> Come yeah. on now, are you with yeah. me? That? See, we've been, we've, we've been evolving at the same thing. Are you with me? At the same time, we've been facing some of the same issues. Hey, listen, man, when I hit this roadblock, this is what I did. Oh, really? Hey, listen, man, when I hit this roadblock, this way, okay, well, good. I ain't face it yet, but I'm taking good notes. So when it shows up, aha, my boy went through it. I got the playbook. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, are you with me there? So you are part of a good church. So you got a couple of marching orders for you, right? The first I need you to is pray for your pastor. Put in the timeline, I will pray for my pastor. I will pray. Listen, don't be selfish. Don't be a taker. Do not be a spiritual shoplifter. Don't be one-sided in this thing. That you come expecting expecting Pastor Brown to have his A game on every time. Every time. He cannot have baseball st uh, statistics. He cannot have basketball statistics. He has to have ministry stats. Are you with me? And what do you mean by that? Well, baseball, you can be under average, you know, five and above. If we go into 10, one lowest, 10 highs, five is average. You do know that, right? In baseball, if, if you have 500, you 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 next level. They about to make some statues and, and, and claim the whole the whole uh, mm -hmm. league to you, Doc. That's 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 next level. Are you with me there? He can't be 50 percent good. Can you imagine if every other message was trash? <laughs> every other oh, message Lord. he missed God. Every other. <laughs> oh. No, that's that's incomprehensible. Yeah. That just don't make no sense. If if you're 80 percent shooter, 80 percent shooter. Oh, my God. Ba basketball? Oh, man. You are the logo. You the logo, your kids, your wife, your mom and them, everybody, all y'all the logo. That doesn't exist. Can you imagine if eight out of ten weeks he's on, the other two weeks we don't know what's going to happen? Yeah. <laughs> Can yeah. you imagine? No. Every time you come in, whether you come in every Sunday, whether you tune in every Wednesday, oh, yeah, I'm meddling now. It doesn't matter what you do. You expect him to be batting a 1,000 every single time, Absolutely. right? Come on, don't play around with him. You expect him to use scripture that apply to your situation. You expect him to be in tune with God and minister, minister you right out of that, you know, right out of the rut, right into a place of wholeness, right? Come on, you expect that. So how about you start praying for your pastor that God keeps him and everything that he holds dear? Amen. That God keeps him, God keeps him right where he is, right in the thick of the things with the Lord. But also God keeps, God preserves, God increases everything that he holds dear. The Amen. people that's important to him, 
that God keeps those relationships. He protects those relationships. The things, the dreams, and the goals and aspirations on the inside of him. He's ministering to you, helping you get your goal, helping you achieve things that you've never imagined, never dreamed of. You're living a life now that's beyond anything that you've imagined because of his ministry. Why you can't pray the same thing happens for him? Amen. Come on, let's, let no, on purpose, let's do that. And then, <clears throat> let's promote the ministry of your pastor. Promote. So first, you're going to pray. Second, I need you to promote. So you're going to promote in two ways. You're going to first promote. Now, are you sharing? Are you sharing? I need to make sure you sharing. Sharing is caring. Y'all do know that, right? Sharing is caring. Don't, 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 don't be that one. Don't be that one. All right. So now you promote in two ways. You promote by imitating and inviting. Now, when I say imitating, I'm not talking about being a carbon copy. I'm talking about following the principles. So if a person went through the archive and started listening to the last six months of pastor's messages, can they see that in your life? Wow. Now, I'm not talking about his laugh. I'm not talking about his style because, like, I couldn't imitate his preaching style. When I tell you I love the way my friend preaches, he, he, he brings, and it's like he could just preach on demand. You know what I'm saying? It's like, <laughs> hey, man, listen, and boom, and he goes in, and you know, I'm like, ooh, you better go ahead on. All right, all right. I'm not talking about doing that. No, 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 because that's cheap. That's cheap. That, 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 that diminishes who you are. But the word that he's delivered, are you walking, are you imitating the grace that's on his life? Are you imitating the gospel that comes from his mouth? And then are you inviting? Are you inviting people to be a part of this amazing church? If you're not, I need you to shake yourself. Come on, shake yourself. And, and now don't put this in the timeline, but I need you to just say it. I will do better. See, because some people will judge you in the timeline. <laughs> right? so I don't want them to judge you. Just come on, commit in your heart. Amen. I'll do better. Come on. So you're going to pray. You're going to promote. Then you're going to plan. Yep, 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 yep. So I don't know how we do an offering and all that stuff there. But, uh, man, and I, oh, I'm kicking myself because I didn't ask for this ahead of time. If, if, if we have pastor's cash app, can we put it up there? See, because now I need you to sow into, now, now, now I need you to sow into the church. Your tithe, boom. Your offering, boom. But then your other offering. Well, how, how, how could you say that? All right. <clears throat> your mortgage or your rent, your light bill. Your cable bill, your cell phone bill, your car insurance, as if you hadn't paid it off, and then your car note, right? I mean, I, 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 I'm not trying to put stuff. It's just, just, just regular stuff, just regular stuff, right? Are you with me? So we can handle multiple things. Why can't you handle multiple offerings? Amen. So we can handle financially, fiscally, the amount of things that we have money in, you know, money going out into. Like, you know, I, I didn't talk about the food for your house. I didn't talk about the gas for your car. Mm -hmm. I didn't talk about the maintenance for it. I didn't talk about your hair, your nails. I didn't talk about any of those things. I'm, I just grabbed basic, simple things. Are you with me there? So it's imperative for you not to miss this sewing moment. So if, if, if we can put it, put it in the screen. Oh, all right. <clears throat> Now, now, is that is that your personal cash app? Yeah. Okay. Because that, that looks just like the church. I know it does. Look just like the Lord's church. All right. Because I want you to be able to do both. You understand? Take care of your tithe, your <laughs> offering, and then. So now, they I have I, it on screen. All right. So it's on the screen. It's on the screen. So this is pastors. So, so now, remember, you're going to pray, you're going to promote, and then you're going to plant, right? So now, Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4. Verse 15, starting from verse 15 through verse 19. Now, I got to read this to you because there are three things I need you to be in faith for. Now, you Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church communicated with me as concerning giving and receiving, but ye only. For even in Thessalonica, you sent once and again unto my necessity, not because I desire a gift, but I desire that fruit may abound to your account. So I need you to, I need you to just slide that, fold that over on the side. There are things that's going to abound to you. But I have all and abound. So what they sent to him, he said, I have all. So I received it. I have all and I abound. So this was no skimpy thing. So you don't, listen, if you don't want to receive it, don't send it out. I have all and abound. <clears throat> I am full, having received of Aphrodite the things which were sent from you, an odor of sweet smell, a sacrifice, a sacrifice. Remember, going above your initial expectation, going above mm -hmm. and beyond it, right? A sacrifice, acceptable, well-pleasing to who? To God. So even though Pastor Brown is the recipient, God is the one that's receiving it. Whew, he said it's well pleasing. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. So when you do this, I need you to be in faith for three things. Favor that you'll walk in. So I'm talking favor with God. 
Favor with God. So when you sow into your man of God, I need you to expect favor with God. I also need you to expect a fullness, personal accomplishments. They, you, you, they're, they're things that you're going to be able to accomplish now that are going to be easier and happen at a much higher, higher uh, capacity and a faster interval. Are you with me there? And then finances. You're going to walk in greater amounts. I need you to be in faith for these things. I'm going to give them to you again. And now listen, they, they, they would have had them to put them on the screen. Uh, right, right as I was getting ready, the Lord, the Lord told me, you cannot close without giving them this. You cannot close without giving them this because this is going to shift and change their entire lives. Right? Hallelujah. Remember I told you, I need you to put it over. There's fruit that's going to abound to your account. What is this fruit? This fruit is favor. I have favor with God. So it's well-pleasing to God. God takes this personal, so I have favor with God. And fullness that you're going to walk in. Remember the apostle Paul said, I'm full. I've received it. Man, I'm over. I'm overjoyed. So what, what you make happen for others, God will bring that thing right back into your life. So that fullness, these are personal accomplishments. It made Paul feel he was full. So there's some things that you're after. This seed is going to open the door for. Wow. And then finances. Now, listen to me clearly. Everything produces after its own kind. Everything produces after its own kind. So when you sow finances, you have a justifiable right to expect finances back into your life. Thank you so much for our time together. I truly appreciate it. I so enjoy being up here with my good friend, the one, the only, the Pastor Robert A. Brown. Glory be to God. Church, listen, man. I hope to God you received all that. I, my, my iPad is just burning up with all these great notes that my <laughs> friend has left to us. I, I do want to, Buster, help me out. I do want to go ahead and try to transition out of here. I want you to receive that word. Uh, I, I truly believe that I'm I'm good soil to sow into. Absolutely. I, I believe that when you sow into the life of your pastor, you guys know that I teach us those five areas of giving that God is challenging us to give and stretching us. They're all biblical, and one of them is supporting your leader. I can tell you, and I know Jay can as well, several testimonies of when we've sown that extra into our lives by yep. pastor. Part mm -hmm. of the things that connect us is our respect for our pastors. Absolutely. The love that Absolutely. we have for our pastors. He, Absolutely. You serve Apostle Hilliard in Texas, mm -hmm. a great, phenomenal man of God. Mm -hmm. And I've seen you serve him, take care of him, and Dr. Mm -hmm. Bridget. Over, I mean, 20 years, man. Right, We've been doing right. this 20 years. <laughs> right, right. We're not new to yeah, it. We're not new years. to it. Right. And you've seen my love for Bishop and Lady. Absolutely, and no doubt. one of the things I tell you, man, some of us are a little slow in receiving a prophetic word like that. I didn't ask him to do that. I didn't I didn't even expect him to do that. It wasn't even the, the whole promise, the uh, reason for us gathering together tonight. Right. But my spirit agree with it. That there's some of you on here tonight that are looking for that breakthrough, that extra urge, nudge in your favor and your fullness and finances. And tonight, God wants you to sow. So if you're willing to sow into the life of your pastor, if you're willing to sow, whatever it is, I want you to grab your device now and just start doing it. Just do it. Just release it and allow God to work in your life. This is a greater season. I'm coming into two decades of serving in the Lord's church. And there's you confidence. You better say that. <laughs> there's confidence, man, in leading in God's church that people don't understand that you come after a while of being around that sage, that wisdom mm -hmm. of knowing who God is. And I'm telling you right now, they have it on the screen. I double dog challenge you. Absolutely. To grab your device and just start sowing tonight. In fact, let's make the entire offering tonight about sowing into your pastor's life. Mm -hmm. I've never done that. It's not something, but I felt an agreement in my spirit, yeah, and it's not something absolutely. that I normally would even do. Right. But wherever you're at, grab it and just begin to sow and watch what the Lord will release in your life. There have you been difficult say moments in my life as a pastor when I needed the divine favor of God, and I would call Bishop and say, hey, I don't know where you're at, mm -hmm. but I need to put this seed in your hand, and I need you to pray for me, and I cannot tell you how many times I've seen that thing unfold in my life. <laughs> favor, <laughs> fullness, and finances show up. Yes, indeed. I'm telling you, Jay will yes, tell indeed. you. And I, let me help you. I'm going to get even more personal, Jay. Mm -hmm. And I normally don't even share this kind of stuff. But I remember there were times when I would come and say, hey, Jay, I need some help covering the payroll mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. covering the bill. And you would bless us and say, hey, just take it, take care of what you need to take care of. Mm -hmm. You've watched us go through the darkest hours of our yep. life. The business yep. almost wanted to sell my business. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> almost wanted to just pack up and leave. And I remember... Mm -hmm. The moment that we start believing God and releasing that seed, how the Father supernaturally <laughs> turned all of that around, and you don't even look like what you've been through. 
And the things that I'm seeing now in my life has been because of my submission to my pastor. Absolutely. Serving the Lord's church. Yes, And understanding indeed. that when you are connected to a good church, when you're mm -hmm. connected to a good church, man, I, I, God will do stuff for you. Now, I'm going to tell you, I was ready to, you know, because you told me I preach on a dime. I was ready to preach, Reverend. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you <laughs> about that key in the door. Oh, oh. Let me help you. Let Reverend. me help you. Reverend, y'all gonna hear that again. Reverend, I need a reference clock so I can keep my time right. Because I, 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 I was struggling. Like, stay focused. Man, stay fo <laughs> let me tell you, that thing spoke to me. Uh -huh. You sticking that, trying to force it. You mm -hmm. just need a little help. Yeah, call for some help. Call for some help call to get you to that next dimension to Look, walk you through man. that next door. Man, and I'm telling you, tonight is a prophetic night. Tonight is an opportunity for you to begin to stretch your faith. We've talked about giving goals all year long. God, mm -hmm. you want us to create giving goals to where we create goals for our retirement goals, right. for our wealth, our health, and all that. God said, create giving goals and watch mm -hmm. what I do. Mm -hmm. And so tonight, I want to encourage you to stretch your faith. If you believe in God for your business, if you yeah. believe in God for that next house, that next dimension, that next connection and repair of a relationship, God will work behind you releasing their faith in that seed. Mm -hmm. So so into your life of your pastor tonight. I love you so much. Thank yeah. you, Dr. James, for hanging out with us tonight. You got it, my friend. Thank you for being a part of us. Man, we really appreciate you. I, I want you to pray for us, and then we're going to get out of here. Absolutely. Thank you for hanging out with us, guys. We love you. Saturday is the feeding. Sunday mm -hmm. morning worship, man. You don't want to miss. Be a part. And I cannot wait to see you. Come what time on. service, Sunday? 1030. 1030. Listen, listen, 1030. Make sure you're here on time. Don't drag your feet. Online, online should serve as a connection and not for convenience. And this is what I mean. If you're unable to travel to come to the building, if you're not going anywhere and you're staying in the house, then online is that connection. But just because I don't feel like going, I'm just going conveniently, don't do that. Don't be that believer. Yes. Let's be in faith that the house will be filled and that we reach other people with online. Are you with me there? Amen. Father, we thank you for our time around your word. We thank you, Father, for the importance of your word, how your word changes our lives. And Father, as you gave me this word earlier, you made it clear, Father, that you would change the commitment, the connection of your people. You will take them to a new level with their commitment and their connection to this great church. It will yield significant, quick dividends for them in Jesus' name. And for those, Father, who have a conviction of heart and they're changing and they're going to do better. Father, prove yourself mighty in their lives, Father, with a quick work, a quick turnaround. Thank you, Father, for an evangelistic door being opened for this ministry like never before. That this season, Father, the harvest will be easier to gather than ever before. There'll be more labors for the harvest of this ministry than ever before. Father, and the generosity of the members, Father, builders of the faith, will be overwhelming toward their pastor. They will begin to sow at new levels and new heights, Father. They will, they will continue to walk this word out, Father, and be a financial blessing to the same degree that he's been a spiritual blessing in season and out of season. We thank you. We give you glory and honor in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. God Hallelujah. bless you, family. We love you. My wife and I send our prayers. We're consistently here for you. Thank you for being such a phenomenal church. Thank you for your generosity and your love for us. And I can't wait to see you this weekend. God bless you. We'll talk to you soon.